Hello everyone, this is Tuti Kansal of BSc Forensic Science 3rd year of NIMS University, Jaipur, Rajasthan. I am an intern at Applied Forensic Research Sciences. This is my presentation on the topic Vegetable Poisons. So let's begin. In this presentation, we are going to learn about what are called as vegetable poisons and some major vegetable poisons including Rixinus communis, Croton tiglium, Albus precatorius, Semicarpus anacardium and Calotropis gigantea. We will also learn their important characteristics along with their signs and symptoms and their medical legal importance in the field of forensic toxicology. Moving further, we will be comparing their fatal dose and fatal periods and then conclude our presentation with their post-mortem findings. So let's start. To understand vegetable poisons, we must first understand the term poison. Now what is a poison? We all know generally poison is a harmful substance that can cause harmful effects on the body like illness, disease and even death of a living being. It can be in any form, either it may be a solid or a liquid or even gaseous forms. Once it enters the body through any route, they cause harmful effects that may even be fatal for the living body. Now, the poison can either be naturally obtained or can be synthetically produced in laboratories. Such category of naturally obtained poisons constitute the plant poisons. They are basically natural toxins synthesized by plants to protect themselves against their predators. And that's why they are non-harmful to plants, whereas they are unfit for human or animal consumption and thus they are called as poison for us. We are going to study some of the common vegetable poisons which have a great medical legal importance in the field of forensic toxicology. Our first vegetable poison is the Rixinus communis. I guess you've all heard about it before as it is none other than the castor plant. Its oil is in so much trend and useful. But it is a poisonous plant to deal with. The whole plant body is poisonous but the main active alkaloid present here is Rixin. Now what is an active alkaloid? I guess you all know that it is the major component of the plant that leads to the poisoning effects. So the major active alkaloid here is Rixin, which is usually present in the seeds. Now talking about its seed morphology, as you all can see in the image, it has oval brown seeds with black spots present on its surface. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of this poisoning. The symptoms can include pain in abdomen, feeling of nausea and bloody diarrhea. The dust of the seed can result in conjunctivitis, that is, inflammation of the conjunctiva, bronchitis and dermatitis, which is a skin condition. So, this is all about the castor plant poisoning. Now, if we look at its medical legal importance, it can be consumed accidentally by children and homicidal purposes due to no specific odor or taste. The active alkaloid here, Rixin, can also be used as a weapon for mass destruction due to its harmful chemical properties. I hope Rixinus poisoning is clear to you. Moving on to the next poison, we have Croton tiglium, also called as Jamal Gota in common language. We studied that in Rixinus, the whole plant body is poisonous, but here the seeds and roots are the poisonous part of the plant and the active alkaloids are crotine and crotonocytes, which are excessively found in the seeds and roots. Now, as you all can see the below image, that the seeds of croton are also oval in shape and somewhat light brownish in color. But unlike Rixinus, they have longitudinal stripes over the surface of the seed. Now, if we talk about its signs and symptoms, we can see that its effects somewhat resembles to the Rixinus poisoning. It also produces pain in the abdomen, nausea feeling or vomiting along with bloody diarrhea, conjunctivitis and dermatitis. I've already explained you the condition of conjunctivitis and dermatitis. I hope it's clear. Now, we've seen that the symptoms of not only these poisons but also the poisons we'll be studying further may have same symptoms just like these. So we can differentiate them by learning their post-mortem findings which we will be studying further. So this was all about Croton Tiglium. 
let's have a look at its medical legal importance. It can be used as a homicidal and accidental poison. This is also used in some areas as a cattle poison as well as it is also used as an abortifacient, specifically in the villages where there are less or no hospitals. The oil or paste of roots are applied on a stick and that is used as an abortifacient stick. It is clear to you. Now talking about our third vegetable poison, we have Abris precatorius. You can see the plant image here. It is also commonly called as Rati. In Hindi, Rati means beads. So that's why its seeds are commonly used to make beads for Mangal Sutra, which is a sacred thread worn by married Hindu females. And not only for Mangal Sutra, it is also used for making many kinds of jewelries. But the whole plant body is poisonous and the active alkaloid present here are abrin, abrine and abrilene. See, it is easy to learn the active alkaloid for different vegetable poison. The trick is to learn their genus name like for rixinus, it's rixin, for abris, it's abrin and abrilene, right? Now as you can see in the image, the seeds are bright red in color have a smooth surface with black spots at their one end and are in the shape of an egg. They give a bright look and hence they are used as beads of necklaces. Now talking about the features of poisoning, they not only produce common effects like abdominal pain, nausea, bloody diarrhea, dermatitis and conjunctivitis, but they also cause drowsiness, that is the loss of consciousness and convulsions followed by the death of the living being. One characteristic feature of these plants are the Rati Sui or Rati Needles, which are specially made to use as a weapon for cattle poisoning and homicides. Thus, it comes under the medical legal importance of this plant. Also, the seed paste is used as abortifacient and an arrow poisons. The powdered form of seeds are also used by some melangers who pretend to be suffering from conjunctivitis as the powdered form of seeds showed conjunctivitis as a symptom. So this poison finishes here. We have completed three poisons till now and our next poison is the Semicarpus anacardium. It is commonly called as the marking nut or bhel in Hindi. They are usually found in the outer Himalayas to the Coromandel coast of India. You can see from the image that its seeds are black in color and somewhat resembling to heart shape with very rough projections or markings at the basal surface. The juice coming from these seeds contain the active principle of the poison that is semicarpol and bilavanol. Its symptoms are different from those we have studied till now. First is it causes the burning pain in the gut along with the feeling of nausea and normal diarrhea. It can either be orally taken or externally applied. So the external application can cause painful acrid serum containing blisters along with the itching on the area of contact. Now if we discuss about its medical legal importances, it is a native medicinal plant in India. So Desi doctors or Hakims may cause an accidental poisoning as they use the same harmful juice to synthesize tonics. And this same juice is also used to produce artificial bruises and ophthalmia by the melangers. Also, it can be used as an abortifacient. So, it is an important vegetable poison. Moving on further, we have our last and the most common vegetable poison, the Calotropis gigantea. We have all seen it in our day-to-day -day lives. They are most commonly present in the subtropical areas and they are also called by the name Madar and its flowers which are beautiful purple colored are also called as the crown flower since they are in the shape of a crown. Its leaves and stalk produce an acrid milky white sticky juice which contains the active alkaloid named calotropis, calotroxin and ascharin. The features of the poisoning includes the common symptoms like the severe pain in abdominal region, vomiting, diarrhea and the feeling of nausea. The external application of juice on the eyes can cause conjunctivitis and on skin can cause dermatitis. This plant has a great medical legal importance as its juice can be used for homicidal poisoning, cattle poisoning and abortions. It is also used to produce artificial bruises by melangers and as a great weapon for arrow poisoning. 
One more medical legal importance of calotropis is that it is also used for infanticides by mixing it with milk and water. With this we come to an end of a detailed explanation of our major vegetable poisons. Hope it is all clear to you. Now let's study the comparison between these plants fatal doses and fatal periods. I have made a comparison table for you to understand it easily as well as learn it thoroughly. Now the first question arises is what is fatal dose? The fatal dose of a poison is the amount of a poison required to cause the fatal effects on the living body. Lower the fatal doses, higher the amount of toxicity it can produce in less dose. Okay, and what is fatal period? So the fatal period is the amount of time taken by a fatal dose of a substance to cause death of the living being. More the fatal period is, the more will be the chances of survival of that person. Okay, now let's look at the fatal doses and fatal periods of these major vegetable poisons which we have discussed. First, you can see here is the Rexinus communis. Its average fatal dose is 10 seeds, while its fatal period is between 36 to 48 hours after ingestion, which means a person can survive up to 2 days after the ingestion of 10 seeds of this plant. Similarly, we have Croton tiglium, whose fatal dose is 4 seeds only and fatal period is 4 to 6 hours. It makes Croton a very toxic plant. The next is Abris precatorius, whose fatal dose is just one seed, thus it is very toxic, but its fatal period is 3 to 5 days, so the chances of survival are comparatively good. Next we have a Semicarpus anacardium, the fatal dose is up to 5 seeds and the fatal period is 3 to 5 days. Now see everyone, there is nothing to understand in this topic, it's all about understanding the concepts, fatal periods, fatal dose and just learning their values. The last one is the Calotropis gigantea, whose fatal dose is still uncertain but the fatal period is usually between 6 to 12 hours. So this was all about the fatal dose and fatal periods of the poisons. Now, our last and final topic is the post-mortem findings for these different types of vegetable poisons. We learn that what changes in the structure of body are seen after death when in case of certain vegetable poisons. So let's begin. A first poison is Rexinus communis. Here main changes are seen in GIT, lungs, kidney and liver. Our GIT will be congested and fragments of seeds can also be found embedded in stomach linings. Heart shows dilation and hemorrhage is seen in lungs, kidney and liver. Our next poison is Croton tiglium. In this poisoning, the mucosal layer of our elementary canal is congested and inflamed. Here also the heart will be dilated. Unlike Rixinus, here we can see the edema of lungs, spleen and kidney. Edema means a buildup of fluid in the tissues, resulting in the swelling of the tissues. Similarly, in Abris precatorius, we can see the edema of skin only at the site of injection and blood extravasation from ruptured arteries can be seen under skin tissues, pleura of lungs and from the pericardium membrane of the heart. Now the poisoning from Semicarpus anacardium shows the blisters in the mouth, throat and stomach regions about which we studied before. It also shows the fatty degeneration of liver. Then our last poison is Calotropis gigantea which may show the congestion of internal viscera. And when it is used as an abortifacient then inflammation is seen in the parts of vagina, cervix and the uterus. So it is overall very important to perform the post-mortem carefully in the cases of poisoning. Now, to finally conclude my presentation, I have added certain references from where you can gain in-depth knowledge about the vegetable poisons. I really hope you all have understood the vegetable poisons and their importance both in forensic toxicology as well as our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you.